Hey, what's going on everybody? Thanks for joining us for another episode. So today we're going to be taking on this really rough condition armoire. Now this thing was coming apart at the corners. It had veneer chipping everywhere. Um, even on the sides it looked like somebody tried to maybe start taking the veneer off so a bunch of the veneer was moved on the removed on the sides so it was just an overall bad condition all around um, this thing almost went for a no sale at an auction we ended up buying it for five dollars um, so we saved it from the dump and we we're going to try to make something nice and useful out of this thing and really give it a nice upcycle so with that let's get started Now the first thing I do is just kind of, I'm going to sure everything up. I'm going to try to glue the corners together, glue any of the moving pieces together. Uh, you just got to kind of shake it around and see where it's moving. A lot of times, you know, on these back panels, you'll have some shifting and some moving. Um, so that's basically what I started out doing is just kind of gluing everything together, using the syringe and getting deep into these, um, these channels and, and gluing everything together. I'm going to start by doing some general cleanup, kind of vacuuming it out, getting a lot of the dust and cobwebs out because this thing was filthy. And now I'm going to do a combination of trying to repair the veneer and chipping some off that's just beyond repair. And I'm going to fill it in with Bondo or wood putty. I'm going to kind of use a combination depending on the location and the amount of damage. So some of the spots where it was kind of separated um, really definitively, I used my syringe and kind of got up behind it and clamped it back together. And other spots, I just had to peel it off and, and get it prepared for Bondo and Wood Putty. And now up at the top up here, there was kind of a raised part that was uh, standing off of the middle here. That's mostly what I wanted to get off. Um, just remove that so it was more of a smoother surface when I come back to fill this in with Bondo. And for whatever reason, the glue on this old veneer did not want to loosen up with the with the heat gun. So I just kind of very carefully used a putty knife and a rubber mallet just to kind of chip away at the pieces I needed to remove. And at the bottom down here, I'm going to remove everything and kind of make it one smooth surface. And I'm gonna finish up removing the veneer on the side here where most of it was already gone. And then for this raw wood where I got the veneer off, I'm just going to give it a quick sanding with a 150 grit sandpaper just to kind of smooth it out a little bit, uh, get some of the, uh, the roughness off from where the, the glue was holding the veneer on. And I'm also going to sand the top smooth just to kind of get those edges sanded down a little bit um, so nothing's kind of sticking out when I go over it with the Bondo. And I'm also going to do the same thing to the bottom. And 
And next I'm just going to put a piece of tape up here just so I don't uh, drip any of the Bondo down onto this little ledge. It's going to be hard to kind of remove it from there if I do get some on. So it's just to kind of protect it a little bit when I'm actually spreading the Bondo. And as you've probably seen me use before, I use this, uh, this wood filler Bondo. Uh, it's the two parts, the cream hardener and the, the base, and you just kind of mix it together. And it does dry pretty quick, so you want to make sure you just keep working it um, you know, pretty quickly to where you need it. And then I'm going to use some of this just regular wood putty. This is a DAP wood putty. I'm just going to use this to kind of fill in some of the smaller holes and scratches on the sides. And I'm going to use the Bondo to fill in these larger missing veneer spots at the bottom here where it kind of ripped off pretty easy. And the Bondo is perfect for this type of thing here where you have kind of a lot missing because it has a really nice hold to it. Um, it doesn't shrink or anything, so it fills in those all those cracks and crevices really nice. And next I'm going to take my sander and just kind of sand all of the Bondo and Wood Putty smooth. To see if there's any spots that are kind of low that I may need to fill in. Uh, the nice thing with what we're going to be using today, it's called Sea Spray by Dixie Bell Paint. It's kind of like a texture that you add to your paint. Um, and then there's a certain technique that you use, and Heather will be showing you that a little bit later in this video. The base of your furniture that you start with doesn't need to be perfect um, or you know perfectly smooth or anything because that texture that you add to your paint really kind of gives it more dimension and so it kind of you know covers up some of these dents and dings and things like that. It'll all kind of blend together. But I think it'll be perfect for a project just like this where you know there's a lot of imperfections, a lot of things you can't do. Um, unless you're really going to take a lot of time to fully restore it. Um, you know, it's the perfect type of product to use because it'll cover up a lot of this stuff, but also give it a new look. I'm also just going to go ahead and give this whole thing a scuff sanding. Uh, you want to make sure, you know, obviously you clean your piece beforehand if it's, you know, really dirty and greasy and things like that. Um, but I'm just going to scuff sand this whole thing just because it is pretty smooth. And I'm already sanding most of it because of the missing veneer and the Bondo, so I just kept going. And next I'm going to add this applique up top here. Uh, we figured it needed something a little bit more because it was really smooth up there. And we just had a few of these laying around, so we figured we'd try to put one up here and you know it looked pretty good so we figured we'd use it and you can pick these up at you know a bunch of different places I believe we got these from D Lawless um, they have a whole bunch of different styles And then I just remove the hardware and I will be using that same hardware again. The first thing I'm going to do on this piece is actually just wipe off all the dirt and dust that's on it from Ethan working on it. And I'm just going to use a little warm water, spray it down and wipe it back. And then we're going to do a brand new process on this. We're going to paint it with a gritty paint. We're going to take this Dixie Belle Hurricane and I'm going to mix it up with sea spray. And the sea spray is going to make it really chunky. Here is the powder. And we're just going to put it into the paint and mix it all up and you'll see the texture becomes really thick and gritty. It almost looks like um, you're mixing up concrete. 
And the reason we're doing this is because this piece had so many different textures on it. It had raw wood where the veneer was pulled off. It had old veneer. And it also has places where it's filled in with wood filler and Bondo. So just in an effort to make this more consistent, we're going to put this texture all over the entire piece. And this is the very first time that I've ever done this process. And it's not really my style, but I thought this was a perfect piece to try it out on. So we're just going to go with it and see how it turns out. Now, we're using a chip brush to do this because you have to stipple it on um, in order to make that texture. If you were to actually brush it on, it would just make brush strokes. So you want to stipple it on like this, and you can see how the chip brush is kind of getting um, real funky looking. Uh, so you want to use the chip brush so that you can just chuck it when you're done and get rid of it, and it's going to pretty much destroy the brush by the time I'm done with this piece. So you just keep stippling, 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 and if it gets too thick and chunky, you can spray a little bit of water in um, just to keep it the consistency you want. And I actually started by putting in a little bit less of the sea spray powder than what they had actually called for, but I knew that I didn't want it too chunky and for it to be a little bit easier to work with since we're doing this really huge piece with it. And you can see how um, it's just covering up that Bondo and the wood and making it all have the exact same texture. We're gonna go over the applique, just everything. We went over everything with this. The only thing I didn't do is I didn't do the back of the piece with the um, texture. I'm going to go over it with the second coat of paint, but not with the texturized portion. And I didn't do the edge around the doors because I didn't want it to have a hard time closing and opening. Other than that, we put this texture on the entire wardrobe. And now I let that dry overnight and the next morning I came back with this vintage duck egg and I just started painting it on. I actually, I did uh, spritz a little bit of water into the can of paint and then decided it needed to be watered down even more. So later on I poured some paint into a cup and watered it down even more um, just so that I could make sure I'm only doing one coat of this vintage duck egg and I wanted to make sure that um, it really went over all those bumps and um, grooves that were on the piece from the texture, so it helped to water it down. But the, the coverage on this was really good, so we did only do one coat. And as I was painting, because we are going over so much texture, I made sure to go um, all different directions just to make sure that we got over every single groove and in all the crevices. And once this was watered down a little bit, the paint went on really nicely over that texture. 
And for this, I did use um, a real brush, not my chip brush. I'm using my zebra brush for this, and we'll link that down below. If you're interested in zebra brushes, you can get them on Amazon. I think you can get them in Lowe's um, or straight from Zebra's website. But they are nice brushes, and they work really well. And now for these drawers, my original plan was to hope there was a nice light wood underneath there that we could leave them more natural. Uh, unfortunately, when I got down, you know, to the raw wood, it was more of a like green poplar and it just didn't look right with the rest of the piece. Um, one of the drawers had a really nice lighter wood to it, but the rest were these this kind of green shade. I was at least hoping it was a wood similar to what the sides of the drawers look like here. Kind of like a nice, really nice grain, nice color, but you know, you can't win them all. And as you can see here, the top one, you know, looks kind of light, looks a little bit nicer, but then the rest of them were all that kind of green color. So what I ended up doing was using this Minwax uh, semi-transparent. Uh, I used this on the the coastal dresser we did a while back on the drawers um you know you can use a paint wash for this if you want to get a similar look i'm using this simply because i have a bunch left over from past projects and and you know i'm just familiar with using it recently so figured i'd just use it and see how it blended the colors of the drawers together And I think that white toned them down enough and kind of matched them up that they they looked pretty similar and kind of toned down that green. And I think the white wash looks uh, pretty nice with that blue color. And next I'm gonna go back and give this a nice sanding over the whole piece. Now for this, I didn't wanna to sand too deep. I wanted to bring out the texture of the sea spray and that under color. So I didn't wanna actually distress on this and actually get down to the, the wood like I would on some other pieces we distress. I mostly just wanted to go over and sand down to that gray color that we used. So I'm not pushing real hard, I'm just going over with a 220 grit sandpaper and just kind of going over the whole piece. And you can see here kind of the contrast between that gray underneath where all the texture is and the blue top coat. And last but not least, I'm going to protect this whole thing with a Dixie Belle top coat. And now normally you wouldn't want to be going over the same spot, you know, more than you'd have to. You want to kind of keep moving in one direction with the brush on a piece like this. And with that sea spray um, texture, that's really hard to do. So I did kind of go back over it a little bit. I kind of went different directions just because when you go over that texture it doesn't get complete coverage because of you know your brush going over that texture so I had to kind of go different directions a little bit um, the, the most important thing is you don't want to keep going over the same spot and reworking it as it's drying because that's when you're really gonna get some brush strokes um, you know you can really mess up your top coat while it's drying but like I said, on a piece like this with as much texture as it has already, you're not really going to notice, you know, that you're going different directions and that you're kind of going over the same spot a little bit. But normally on a regular piece, you would want to be very careful on how you apply the top coat.
And as you can see, it does look a little bit white as you apply it, but it does dry clear. And next I'm gonna finish off the drawers here with a little bit of Miss Mustard Seeds beeswax. And again, for this, you just use a just a tiny little bit on your rag and just kind of rub it on and then buff off the excess. And I'm also gonna apply that same wax to these tracks inside here, just so the drawers move nice and smooth. And as I almost always do, I'm going to finish off these drawers with Howard's Feed Wax. Uh, this stuff is really nice. It brings out the, the texture in the wood. It makes it nice and rich. Um, but I'm also going to do these sides here just to kind of give it a nice, rich look. All right, because I can't leave well enough alone and I kept looking at this piece thinking, what else does this need? It needs something. I decided to go back with a little bit of fusion mineral paint in the color casement and I just lightly, lightly, lightly dry brushed it just to give it more of an old world feel. Again, this is like totally out of our wheelhouse. This is not our normal style. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but it is definitely an improvement from what we got for $5 of the auction. So you can't complain about that. Here's a reminder of what it looked like before we started. Here it is all finished up. And I'm interested to hear what all the comments are going to be on this one because I know it is nothing like anything we've ever done before on this channel or even before we started this channel. I've never done anything like this one before. I hope you enjoyed this makeover and we will be back next week with a brand new makeover for you to enjoy. And in the meantime, if you'd like to watch more of our videos, you can check them out right here. We'll see you next time, guys.